Okay, are you ready? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, so we'll start. All right, so this, the next speaker is uh, Sheng Meng from Seoul. Uh, he will tell us about the uh, endomorphisms of projective varieties. Please. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Okay, today I'll try to uh, I'll talk about the endomorphism of projective varieties at the first glance and uh, uh, many folks on uh, uh, asking various conjectures and uh, several open questions. And uh, so I'll skip many uh, detailed proofs. Okay. So I'll try to make it easy for you to understand. Okay. So we, uh, for simplicity, we start with a smooth projective variety over complex number field and uh, uh, suggested endomorphism, uh, a suggested endomorphism uh, then it is automatically finite, and uh, so our project in the program is uh, the characterization and the classification of the. Maybe I let me see. Let me, maybe I use the. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I use this slide that. Okay. So we try to characterize such X and classification. Uh, it's classification of the, uh, the variety and the characterization of the endomorphism. Uh, the first uh, exercise is, uh, is for the curve case. Then we can apply the well-known Hurwitz formula. And we see that the genus has to be less equal than one. So it is either a smooth rational curve or an elliptic curve. Uh, we, we use, uh, or we use, uh, say, the, the replication divisor formula. Here, Kx is the canonical divisor, and Rf is uh, uh, the replication divisor of F. Okay. Uh, in higher dimensional case, uh, we need to, uh, we, we, we first uh, use the Kodar dimension uh, to classify this. Uh, so the first, uh, uh, we take the Itaka vibration. Uh, then we have a, a for uh, when the Kodar dimension is greater or equal than zero, and uh, then we have a, a equivalent vibration, which means the following di this diagram commutes. Moreover, the descended endomorphism has a, a final order, means it is an automorphism, it is isomorphic, and uh, after iteration, it is uh, just the identity map. So it means that uh, we can decompose or we can focus on uh, the, uh, the endomorphism by restricting F on uh, each fiber of uh, this Itaka vibration. Okay. Uh, and here is a, a general fact that if X is a pseudo effective, then F is a tau. Let me see. Let me see. The, let me see. Uh, maybe I use it. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Maybe I still need to write something here. So. Uh, here it is easy to see that uh, we have the ramification divider formula. So we have kx equals to pull back kx plus ramification divider. And uh, by iteration, you can further have pull back with substitute kx plus. So if kx is pseudo effective and uh, uh, if rf is uh, non zero, then by doing step by step, then you have infinitely many components. Plus, if, so, but RF is an effective divisor, which is defined by the summation of prime divisor, the pullback or the prime divisor minus the pre image of the prime divisor. So, it means that but KX, if KX is pseudo effective, it, can, it cannot have infinitely many components. So, 
it means that, uh, so this implies RF is zero, has to be zero, which means that by purity of branch lock, uh, by purity of branch lock, it means that uh, F is eta. Okay, so, so the second, our second, the second thing is to, uh, to see the case when Kx is not pseudo effective, or we mean that Kx is, uh, uh, or mean the quadratic dimension. Uh, so, so in the second case, we focus on quadratic dimension less than zero, or even more Kx is not pseudo effective. Uh, then we can take the, then it is unirod. Then we can, then we can take the, um, the uh, maximal rational kinetic component to caution all the rational curves. Uh, this kind of vibration has the, the property that, uh, why, why is it now unirod? And the fiber is rational kinetic. Uh, which we are, I will introduce later. Uh, and uh, by taking a good model of the, of the non-union root base, we can make the, uh, this diagram commutes also. And so F descends to a subjective anamorphism of G. But this time G may not be an automorphism of final order. Okay, so we see the, the definition of rational kinetic variety is uh, simply that the general two points can be connected by a rational curve. And, uh, and uh, another, uh, and the base, and the base, as we see the base is non unirod non unirod uh, uh, So we have to say, so, so, so the base Y may have the quadratic dimension Y. Uh, roughly we can assume that it's greater or equal than zero and uh, as we can take the eta vibration, so we can assume that the quadratic dimension y equals to zero. And uh, uh, the most important case is when the, the canonical divider is numerically trivial. Of course, there is still a possibility that the canonical divider uh, is a, a, a non-movable non divisor. Uh, but here, uh, for simplicity, I only focus on the case when kx, the canonical divider is numerically trivial. Then we can apply the Buell and Boglom of decomposition, which says that uh, by taking uh, eta cover, uh, uh, x leads into uh, product of three, uh, three types of varieties. One is the abelian variety, and uh, uh, here xi is either a hypercalar or strictly clavier, which means that uh, here strict clavier means uh, uh, h i zero equal to zero for i equals to one two t o n minus one. N is the dimension of the clavier, and it has h uh, n zero equals to one, which means the canonical divider. Uh, which, which uh, this is uh, by definition of uh, okay. However, uh, we want to decompose. Uh, we want to study the endomorphism of F. So we have a suggested endomorphism here. We want to lift such F in general. The pi can uh, in general the eta cover. There are infinitely many eta cover here. So we don't know whether this pi can be taken. Uh, so we need to, t uh, so we need, we, we need to make this pi to be F, uh, F lift liftable. And so, so we need to take the, uh, something like the minimal one called the upper basic closure. So in this way, one can take the uh, eta cover to be uh, F equivalent. So we have, So we have x1 cross a to x f. So this is called f theta. And moreover, f, this f theta can split to each term. It can split to endomorphism. So f theta equals to 
F1 cross F2 plus Q. Then cross F8. Okay. Uh, and the cis uh, hyperkiller or strict club DRE is simply connected. Endomorphisms are all, uh, suggested endomorphisms are always uh, automorphisms. And uh, so it reduced the study of the uh, uh, endomorphism of club DRE to the automorphism of uh, hyperkiller and uh, strict club DRE and endomorphism of abelian varieties. Okay. In today's talk, I will mainly focus on the rational connected varieties. Okay. Okay. So we see that uh, since the uh, uh, non-isomorphic endomorphism, since we have a non-isomorphic endomorphism F uh, cross any identity of any variety, it's still non-isomorphic. So we need to add some further assumption on the endomorphisms, uh, which is necessary. We, uh, <clears throat> uh, and we will see later. So two kind of very important endomorphisms are polarized and anti-amplified endomorphism. The polarized endomorphism is defined by the pullback of some endpoint divisor is linearly equivalent to uh, linear equivalent to some q q q h. Here q is assumed to be an uh, integer, okay, integer greater than one. And a generalization of anti-amplified endomorphism. Uh, is that uh, pull back some ample divisor minus uh, itself is ample. Uh, uh, this, this definition is motiv uh, motivating in several, uh, several aspects. So here I only mentioned the one is that it is a complete under by taking product. For example, if you take uh, two polarized endomorphism, uh, the product may not be polarized. So, so we need to the assumption into MP5 here. Okay. Uh, there are several equ equivalent uh, definition of uh, and the proposition of polarized and anti amplified endomorphisms, which also is the motivation uh, of uh, of uh, their appearance. Uh, first is that uh, uh, first uh, we look at the pullback action on the. Uh, on the cycles or on the H, uh, singular cohomology uh, and on the narrow cell group. Uh, a cell shows that uh, the polarized endomorphism has uh, every eigenvalue being of modulus q to the power of i over two. But it doesn't mean that it, <coughs> uh, so we need to be careful that uh, the h i here, here it is i, oh, sorry, here it is i over two. And uh, if we look at, uh, and indeed, uh, uh, we can show that uh, uh, we can give an equivalent definition that uh, if f is polarized, if and only if we look at the pullback action on the narrow theory group, uh, it is a metric, uh, it is a finite dimension, uh, or a finite dimensional vector space. Uh, oh, here, I, I need to tensor with, tensor with, sorry, and tensor, tensor with the C, for you, tensor with R or tensor with C. And so it is, uh, you can look at the metric and uh, you can look at the Jordan canonical form. Then it is a diagonal metric uh, and uh, all the entries that has to be, all the entries, which means uh, all the diagonal entries, which are the eigenvalues are uh, of modulus Q, uh, which because we can embed here, narrow theory X can be, in, uh, can be tensor with R can be embed to H2. So as we as we have seen the sales condition that uh, all the eigenvalues of, of H two is the Q to the power of two over two, so it is Q, and uh, conversely it also holds. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so for anti-amplified endomorphism, it also has a clear definition. We say that uh, if uh, if all uh, if the metric has all the eigenvalues uh, modulus. Uh, greater than one, then it is anti-amplified. Okay. Okay. So now with uh, uh, now with uh, uh, with these two kind of endomorphism introduced, uh, Brustad and uh, Bonio, uh, uh, 
propose the, the following conjecture that if uh, a normal projective, okay, we assume this smooth, for example. So we can assume this is smooth. Although it is proposed for normal projective RT, uh, they asked uh, whether X is of a clavial type. Okay, by clavial type, uh, we mean uh, that uh, it, it, is, uh, it admits some uh, uh, effective Q divisor such as a pair is a log canonical and uh, uh, the canonical divisor plus the boundary is numeric numerically trivial. Hmm. Uh, and this conjecture is now known to be true for the surface case. Uh, surface case is done by, by themselves and uh, later generalized by Yoshikawa to the inti amplifier case. Uh, in general, to show this conjecture, first, uh, as we see, uh, if, if this conjecture is true, first, you need to show that uh, the, the canonical di anti canonical divisor. So this definition shows that the minus canonical divisor equals to uh, is numerical is numerically equivalent to. Uh, indeed, this by abundance it, it, it abundance means that it implies by Gongyo it says that uh, the kx plus delta is uh, q linearly trivial. So this means that uh, the minus kx. It means that the minus kx is a q linear equal to the q effective divisor, which is q, this is a q effective. So the first thing we need to show that it is, or, or we simply say it is effective. Uh, and this is proved by, uh, uh, by several joint work with uh, John and Cassini. Uh, f first, we show that it is pseudo effective, and later we say that we prove that it is uh, uh, effective uh, by using the uh, mostly by using a core analysis. Uh, but here is a problem. Uh, we need to assume that the canonical divider is Q Cartier. So, this assumption. However, uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, we hope that this conjecture uh, is true in, in four generalities. So we want to know whether we can remove the Q Cartier assumption here. So this is, uh, so far it is unknown. <clears throat> uh, sorry, can I uh, oh. interrupt a little bit? So, so you, you say that it is actually is not smooth, but not normal right now. But when, uh, 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 yeah, normal, yeah. Uh. But you say you, you cancel the normal, say it, it is smooth. Uh, yeah, yeah, today we, we focus on smooth case. Yes, because uh, uh, if, if I talk about the singularity for subjective endomorphism, it will take me a lot of time. It will trouble quite a lot. It is unlike okay. the automorphism case, yeah. Okay. So, so if, you don't know, if you don't know much about the singularity, then you just simply assume everything is smooth, yeah. But indeed, for subjective endomorphism, singularity really counts. Uh, really matters, and uh, it is uh, quite uh, different. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. But this conjecture is uh, is uh, is asked by by very very general uh, normal projective right here without any assumption. Okay. Okay. We come back to our uh, today's. Uh, uh, main point for the rational kinetic case. Okay. Uh, here smooth is also very important here. And uh, we, we first uh, look at the very old conjecture. Okay. Why is for the surface? The first glance at the surface. So smooth rational surface is equivalent with smooth rational kinetic surface. And Sato uh, asked whether it is true that if we admit a non-isomorphic one, uh, then it is just the toric. Uh, and this is, this is proved by Nakayama. Okay. I will talk about this later. Another conjecture is, uh, uh, is also very old. I don't know who proposed this conjecture. It says that smooth final variety, by final I mean the anti-canonical divider is ample. 
uh, and the picker number, which is which is the dimension of the neuron cell uh, or rank dimension of the neuron cell with tensor with R or tensor with C. Okay. If it is the picker number one and uh, uh, smooth final x is smooth final picker number one, and uh, you have a non-isomorphic, then it is nothing but P. This 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 plus the picker number one implies that it is degree f. Uh, it is it is q polarized. It is polarized, and uh, degree f equals to q to the power dimension x. <clears throat> okay, uh, so it is very natural to combine these two conjecture to get a very very uh, difficult uh, well. Uh, which here I simply call it a Tory conjecture, which is not very accurate. Uh, it says that uh, for smooth rationally connected variety, uh, if it admits an anti-amplified and a morphism, it is uh, whether it is toric. Uh, note that uh, this uh, this conjecture implies uh, uh, this implies this automatically. Okay, uh, because the toric uh, smooth toric uh, final. Variety of pick number one is the automatic PN. Uh, before I uh, talk about the previous conjecture, I also mentioned another related conjecture. Uh, 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 it concerns about the first. It concerns. It is also a very very old conjecture concerning about the uh, so-called totally invariant sub variety. Uh, uh, here. Uh, I say a sub variety is totally invariant it means that its pre image, its pre image uh, is it itself. Okay, I, I, I skip the total periodic, uh, it is just a uh, uh, taking iterations. Okay, so uh, this conjecture uh, precisely it says that if, if f is a nice morphic and morphic on p n, and if f inverse z equals to z, then after changing of the coordinate, then z is defined by something like this is pm, and defined by, moreover, it is defined simply in x, it is defined by uh, x0, x, well, I, maybe I forgot which is uh, n minus m or something, n minus, n minus m, or n minus m plus one. Anyway, it is by, defined by x0 equal to zero, x, uh, by, by these uh, linear equations. <clears throat> okay. Uh, of course, you can ask this question for uh, for general for general torque variety. So this I call it uh, so far uh, the torque boundary uh, torque boundary conjecture. Uh, before that, uh, I say that uh, a, a pair. A, a log pair x delta is toric pair if uh, if x minus uh, x minus delta is a torus and uh, it has action extended action on this variety. Uh, okay, so the general conjecture is pr proposed by saying that <clears throat> so let x be a smooth toric variety and uh, f is uh, inter amplified. And uh, we denote by sigma the union of all totally periodic sub varieties. And uh, we ask whether uh, the sigma is contained in some toric boundary. Okay, here uh, x delta is called a toric pair. Then I, here I call delta is a, is a toric boundary. Okay. Uh, divisor, oh, maybe. Uh, note that uh, uh, you can simply consider this to be uh, totally invariant here, because we can take iteration, and uh, indeed this is uh, proved by uh, we prove that we show that uh, for anti-amplified anti endomorphism there are only at most uh, find many totally periodic sub varieties. Okay, so these are two, uh, so together we have now we have two. Uh, Big conjecture. One is called toric conjecture here, and then we we focus on these two conjectures: this conjecture and uh, uh, the toric boundary conjecture. <clears throat> okay, now let, let me 
Now let's let's look at how to uh, how to deal with these two conjectures. Uh, the main technique you use is the so-called equivalent minimum model program. Here I roughly uh, state the results. So suppose uh, uh, a variety admits an anti-amplified endomorphism, and then we show that we can show that X has only finite many extremal contractions. It means that uh, it means that uh, it means uh, this implies that if you consider the uh, effective one cycles, the closure of effective one cycles. Uh, taking closure, uh, and you consider the Kx negative part. It has only a finite many Kx negative with extreme rays. Okay. Uh, moreover, indeed we show that uh, even for those Kx positive or Kx triple uh, uh, divisor, it, uh, if it is contractible, then it, there are only finite many of them. Uh, therefore, and uh, <clears throat> in this way, we can show that uh, this is uh, this implies that uh, if we, uh, we, for any contraction after iteration, uh, after iteration, it will fix every contractible extremal race. So the contraction, the contraction or the flip uh, uh, will be equivalent. So. For any final sequence uh, of the minimal program, this is X, uh, this is the final sequence, uh, then we can have the, then we can have the, uh, the following committed diagram. <clears throat> uh, note that for the surface case, uh, even without the interamplified anamorphism, we can also run the equivalent minimal program. Uh, because we can show if it admits a non-isomorphic suggesting amorphism, it has not only finite many uh, negative curves because every contraction uh, will, uh, will contract the negative curves. Uh, <clears throat> the reason we, the reason we, uh, we don't need the anti-amplifier for surface is because it is a lower dimensional and uh, indeed uh, uh, it is, uh, Indeed, it is a very, very simple exercise that, so if X is smooth, rational, smooth, rational surface, if F is not isomorphic, then F is either polarized, or X is nothing but P1 cross P1. This is because, uh, uh, this is mainly because that the negative, uh, the appearance of negative curves. So if it is not a P1 cross P1 and not P2, uh, because for P2 an isomorphic is always polarized. So if you, then you must admit the negative curve. So it either hit a broke or pick a number is greater or equal than three by classification. So uh, anyway, it must, uh, if, it is, if X is not a P1 cross P1 or P2, then X must admit uh, one negative curve, uh, which means that uh, this curve C, it has uh, F, uh, it, since you have only find many negative curves, so F, so after iteration, you can say F inverse C equals to C, which implies that F pullback C equals to C. Now by the, uh, then you take the self intersection, then you can easily see that F pullback C equals to degree F C square. And uh, this, this will imply that uh, F is polarized. Because the C square is, uh, C square is not equal to zero. Okay, this is, uh, uh, still you need a, a little bit of work, but, I was, uh, but almost uh, but almost done here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, here right recently, for smooth rational connected variety, uh, for the EMMP equivalent minimum model program, uh, indeed we can further show that uh, uh, 
there exists a mini model program. So starting from SRC, so you can run find the many steps uh, possibly flip involved, and end up with a point. Moreover, uh, by the equivalent mini model program, you should cover can further show that uh, such a variety is a phenotype, uh, which means that uh, uh, there is a there is this uh, log pair, which is a KRT, and uh, the uh, and uh, minus KX plus delta is ample. Okay, note that, uh, however, this is still far from being toric, uh, but we know that uh, toric variety is a, is a, is a final type. <clears throat> no, so in particular, this means that uh, it's big. Uh, very, uh, until very recently, we, uh, we, uh, we successfully showed that we can, we almost can show that uh, uh, for threefold, uh, uh, the, conjecture, the toric conjecture is true. Uh, there is still a gap here, it is final type. But here, our assumption is a final threefold. Uh, from, uh, so there is still a gap here. Uh, uh, but even for smooth final threefold, it is, uh, it is quite difficult. Uh, here, we indeed proved it for, uh, even for non-anti-amplified endomorphism. So we, uh, our main result is that X is either toric, so this means uh, P1 across a diapedal surface here. Uh, if only, if and only if it admits a uh, non-isomorphic CJT endomorphism. Sometimes the non-isomorphic uh, one are easier to deal, uh, to deal with uh, than the anti-amplified or polarized case. And uh, indeed, more precisely, we can show that X is toric if and only if it admits anti amplified. And we can replace this by polarized. And uh, uh, for the non toric case, so it means that it is a product of P1 uh, and uh, of their path of surface. If and only if it uh, it's a non isomorphic endomorphism which is not polarized, okay, this is our main result. Uh, the proof involves uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, different uh, techniques. Here I can only mention a, a sketch idea. Uh, uh, first, we look at the case when the pick number is greater or equal than two. Mm, then we try to uh, run the mini model program. Uh, for the threefold, we know that the mini model program may involve with a singular singular ones. But here we are able to sorry here. Uh, uh, but, but but with the dynamic involved, we can run this mini model program involving with only smooth variety, uh, smooth uh, smooth varieties, such that the First contraction, such so that the first contraction is either uh, uh, the first contraction, uh, we know that the first one is either divisorial uh, or final because X is smooth. This is by Morris, 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 Morris result. Uh, and moreover, we can show that Y is also smooth. And by certain choice, we can make this Y also final, but uh, uh, it has an advantage and disadvantage uh, if you assume the Y is final or not final, uh, if you uh, assume Y is final. If you assume Y is final, also final, then you can use induction on the pick number. However, uh, there are several difficulties uh, to show that X is toric from Y being toric. But if you uh, free the, uh, uh, if you, relax your assumption that Y being final, uh, Y is still a final type, uh, then we, but you can still show that Y is uh, toric. Then you can, some, uh, by, by a suitable choice of the contraction, you can sh uh, show that uh, uh, X is toric. Uh, uh, this is quite technical, so I skip here. Uh, but here, even for the, uh, even uh, considering the divisor and the final contraction, uh, it is uh, quite difficult. Uh, first, uh, for the final contraction, 
in general, for higher dimensional case, final constraint may not even be equidimensional. So, uh, so the first thing is that uh, we need to, uh, however, for the threefold case, uh, a final contraction, if it is a final contraction to a surface, uh, it is uh, uh, equidimensional. However, it is uh, at most uh, a conic bound. So, so, so in the first case, this is, uh, uh, this contraction pi is uh, a conic bundle at first. Uh, but with the dynamical assumption, you, you, can further, you can further show that uh, pi is uh, a P1 bundle. Here, I mean simply a topological P1 bundle. And uh, one more further, you need to show this is an uh, algebraic P P1 bundle, which means that uh, which means uh, we can write x as a, uh, as a projective projective vector bundle uh, defined uh, of rank two defined over uh, defined over the some derivative surface. And this is a, this is the final surface. Okay. Uh, each step is quite difficult. So and this. And further, we need to show that, uh, uh, sorry, further, further we need to show the splitness of, uh, of the vector bound I'll talk about later. Uh, second is about the divisor contraction. Uh, for the divisor contraction, uh, here it is uh, related to our second uh, big conjecture uh, on the torque boundary. Uh, so now you, if you have a divisor contraction, so it can be viewed as a blow up, and it can be realized as a blow up of uh, some totally invariant smooth curve, uh, which are uh, uh, which are contained in some two totally invariant prime divisor. This something is very important because otherwise, currently we cannot show the torque boundary conjecture. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this this further implies that this is a, a torque blow up. So if if by induction we can show why it's toric, then, then our previous x is toric. So if by uh, for, for the first case if e splits the x and the y is toric, then this shows that x is toric. Okay. So for the, uh, okay, so this is what I mean. So first uh, you need to show the splitness of, uh, of the vector bundle. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, and America proved that if the vector bundle is semi-stable, then it splits. So, so we, we need to show this. So this turned out to be showing the semi-stability of the non-splitting vector bundle, okay. Uh, in general, uh, for higher rank, uh, this is this is far from to be known. Okay, okay. Uh, this is what I say that uh, for the second uh, divisor contraction, uh, you need to show the tor uh, you need to prove the torque boundary conjecture for prime dividers. So. Uh, so the second one, because I show that, uh, the, so it is a blow up, blow up some curve C, blow up some curve C. So this C is contained in P1, or maybe not, uh, is containing or, or one, some component of P1 cross P2. And uh, P, and if you show the torque boundary conjunction for dividers, then P1, P2 is contained in some toric boundary delta. Uh, then it is, a, then, then the blow up is a, uh, is a toric blow up because you can, because C, the C can be viewed as a toric boundary. So this is, uh, can be viewed as a toric orbit. So this, is, this proves that this is a toric orbit. Closure.
Okay, so as we see that, for example, if you blow up P3, blow up a curve, so it is also pk number two, then you have, uh, you, you can blow, blow down uh, to P3. So you still, uh, oh, oh, sorry, maybe I, I should not say P3. You can have some uh, y's of pk number one and blow up some curve. And so you, you need to say that y is toric, which means that uh, y is P3. So this, uh, so, so for the, for the pk number one case, uh, it, uh, <coughs> It is already very difficult. Luckily, uh, we know the. Uh, luckily, it is uh, known by uh, at least we have two kind of uh, proofs. First is by America, uh, Rowinski and uh, uh, They proved that uh, the spoon final refer directly. Um, mm, uh, this part I'm not very familiar with. Uh, a second approach uh, is more general by <clears throat> several, uh, several, several groups of people. Uh, first, uh, we know that, uh, first we know that the homo uh, it is true uh, for homogeneous spaces. Uh, so this includes the quadratic hypersurfaces. And uh, but we will show that uh, if the hypersurface of degree, uh, if the hyper, uh, if it is the hypersurface of some, uh, here, I mean, it is containing some Pn, and is, uh, n can be up to three. And uh, half a surface of uh, degree greater, equal than, uh, greater than two, then it does not admit any non-isomorphic endomorphism. And in this way, uh, together with the work of Hoang and Mock, uh, they showed that uh, if, the, if, the final, final work, if the final manifold of pk number one admits a rational curve with a trivial normal bundle, then, uh, <clears throat> then it cannot admit any non-isomorphic endomorphism. And uh, for the uh, threefold case, this assumption is not satisfied unless, uh, except p3. So if, uh, if the final threefold of pk number is not p3 or hyper quadric surface in p4, then it must be, <clears throat> then it must be, it must admit some rational curve with trivial normal bundle. Uh, so this provides a way maybe one can look at the uh, higher dimensional case, but it is still very complicated here. But at least uh, for the piece, uh, for the, uh, for final threefold, it is uh, now known. Okay. Uh, okay, so, so now we have to deal with the torque boundary conjecture. So we, st we first look at the classical one, uh, when x is uh, uh, where x is equal to the projective space. Uh, for the, uh, so uh, the following is the known case uh, for the for the surface case, the for the threefold case, threefold case is still not fully solved. It is only known for the when y is a prime divisor, but can be here it can be a singular. But for the curve case, it's still not known. And in, for higher dimensional case, uh, if this is assumed to be smooth hypersurface, uh, then it, uh, then, they, then this implies that z equals to. <laughs> and uh, and uh, for the general 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 pika number case, uh, uh, the toric boundary conjecture is is known for, uh, mostly for the prime dividers. So for the surface case, we show that we can we can show that uh, the totally periodic curves are, can be contained in some torque boundary. And uh, for, for, the, uh, for the threefold, we can also show that the prime divisor uh, containing some torque boundary. <clears throat> uh, uh, let me see.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. How, uh, not however. Uh, I don't even know. But if you look at the, uh, if you like look at the code and uh, higher code dimensional cycles, uh, high code dimensional sub varieties, uh, uh, this question is totally unknown. So for example. They are very, <laughs> the question is very simple here, but uh, at first uh, you look at this question, it is very simple, but if you really uh, try to solve this question, these questions is quite difficult. So for example, the most simple one is, even for P2, uh, we don't know how to show that uh, they are at most uh, three totally invariant points. So, and also even if, uh, even if, even if you have three totally invariant points, uh, we don't know whether it is, con it, can, it, cannot be, uh, it cannot be contained in your common lines. So no, this case is not possible. Note that there are examples that for totally invariant points is not contained. So this is, uh, for example, this is P. It is totally invariant point. But P is not containing any divisor, is not containing any, but sorry, but uh, F has no totally periodic curves. So, so this turns out to be this question can be quite difficult. And even if you ask, uh, uh, if you ask uh, the uh, totally higher co-dimensional totally in one sub varieties about the variational properties, it is not known. So we don't know whether the totally in one the sub variety of PN is unirod or not. For example, we don't know whether P3 can have uh, totally in one the elliptic curve or not. Of course, by conjecture, this is not possible, but we still don't know. Uh, and also this question involves, uh, uh, besides it also uh, involved with a lot of uh, things like the singularity, even the normality. So even the normality, singularity, or oh, no. <clears throat> uh, uh, but, the third one may be very important uh, because uh, for the equivalent minimal program, usually our totally environment sub variety uh, has some further, further prop, uh, property, uh, which means that uh, the Z is totally environment uh, high co dimensional sub variety, but it may admit uh, equivalent blow up. So if, uh, note that if Z, uh, unlike the automorphism, if Z is uh, totally invariant, if Z is totally the blo this blow up may not be equivalent in general. But if it is equivalent, can we show further that Z is unirational, rational, linear, or uh, or for the general uh, for the general uh, for the general torque variety, can we show it is in the torque boundary? So this is uh, uh, this is uh, quite difficult. Uh, but uh, okay, but here uh, the known result is that for P three, uh, we can show this. We show this for smooth curve D and uh, okay. So if the blob Z is further to be final and uh, the projective space is uh, three dimensional, then we can show uh, this result. So this is why we can uh, finally say that uh, final threefold is uh, torque. Uh, okay. Uh, so for the totally, for the prime divider, uh, this kind of question is still, there are still some unknown questions Okay, so let's focus on the smooth rational kinetic variety and uh, degree of uh, and F is uh, degree F is greater than one, and we consider only the prime totally one prime divisors. So, 
uh, the normally does that uh, if you count the components, then it is less equal than the dimension of x plus the pk number. And uh, you can also look at the position of these boundary dividers. Uh, uh, it says that uh, it is said that uh, the, the 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 log pair is log has log canonical singularities, and uh, in this way, uh, by by using a uh, concept of a complexity, uh, if the component is exactly dimension x plus zero x, then it says that the pair is already a toric pair. <clears throat> okay. And the further, uh, further we can say uh, we can we can show that uh, uh, this is the final result. So if uh, if the if all sides uh, if all sides are uh, totally invariant dividers, it is uh, it tau, then the pair is toric pair. Uh, this also plays an important role in our proof of the uh, of final previous final threefold uh, uh, being toric. However, in general, this condition is quite strong, too strong. Mm. Uh, here, the uh, here the proof is uh, 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 is mainly using the uh, proving the semi stability and the vanishing of the first and second chain class. Here, I miss look vanishing of the first and second chain of uh, chain class of the the log uh, the log response form. Maybe it need to be refined. Uh, uh, so. The vanishing of C1, C2 plus the slow semi stability implies that this is a, uh, this is a, is trivial. And uh, this further can imply that uh, the, 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 the number, the number of the components is nothing but dimension X. And uh, the, and the, first, the previous result by the by these four people uh, is indeed uh, this is uh, dynamic free. Uh, so it means that if we can uh, in this way we can show that uh, x sigma is toric pair, and uh, for toric this is an if and only if condition. <clears throat> So, okay, this is the end of my talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So any questions? Okay, if not, then let's thank speaker again. And okay, then we'll see the uh, next talk. We'll have the five minutes break and then we'll start uh, at three. All right, thank you again. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>